Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and oh god, it's been a while since one of these has come out. Welcome back to Humans Be Gone. Okay, yeah, so this is number eight, Mantis Mayhem. Oh god, and I remember correctly, because I will admit, it has been a little bit since I watched the last episodes. So, uh, so if I remember correctly, Sephodra and Rose uh, were out on a call because, you know, humans, uh, and then... The humans went to hiding, and then it ended with the humans coming in contact with a cow. Yeah, this is a cow. I I swear, the, the whole Demi... Oh god, what, it's been so long since I watched. What was it called? Demi-ation or something? The, the whole sort of weird mutation thing that goes on on this planet. I... Oh god, I, I want to find out what's going on with this place, because... Oh god, I, I need to figure, I, I need to find out what's going on with this place, because it is not normal. So yeah, um, one last thing before I get this started, there's going to be, so I mean, obviously there's going to be a lecture at the end of this, so I need to remember how many points I had last time. One eternity later. <sighs> yeah, so I now have my points totaled up from my, that I have for this, season, I guess you could call, um, but because of my own stupidity in the last reaction, I didn't actually say what it was in the video or show it on screen, so just to where I start off with, um, I'm starting off with 61 points in for this video, we'll have to see where that leads to in the next, at the end of this, uh, but also, so I, after re-watching the video, I asked specifically, like, the demilu demolution uh, whatever it was called, if that would affect humans. And um, I re was reminded by the fact that the creator of the series actually commented on my video that we have in fact seen a demi loot human, and um, I think you can tell which of them it is. <laughs> So yeah, so ha so like, I don't want to lollygag about this. So of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the day. And uh, yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get into this then, shall we? Yeah, not a cow. I don't think that produces good beef. It looks like it's all like bone and- why didn't you jump? Lacking ears, most insects are totally deaf. Mantises are an exception. There is an ear right here. And so... Wait. I hear... Okay, so I was going to say something about the whole thing, but like, what an odd place to put an ear, but... I, I did catch myself thinking that, realistically, on a normal-sized mantis, uh, that would kind of make the most sense, and given that all of these insects we see are just giant versions of regular insects, that there's no real point to, there's no real chance for it to change. Actually, wait, are mantis ears, do they work the same way as human ears? Like, with, like, bow, well, I guess it wouldn't be. Actually, I'm gonna look this up right now, I'm curious. Uh, hearing man. Uh, mediated by a single ear located in the ventral midline of the body. The ear comprises of two tear drop shaped uh, tympana facing each other in a deep longitudinal groove. They are separated by no less than 150 nanometers. I think that's a nanometer, isn't it? Oh no, that's a picometer. Of course, it's a P. What? Of course. I want to see like a picture of this or something. Why does nobody have pictures? So I mean, at the very least, not mechanically the same, but you know, the same in principle, obviously. I can't believe it still makes the same noise. I'm sorry, what happened to that? What happened? <laughs> oh, that's what happened. I didn't sh see she cut like the intestine or, or or something on it. I mean, I know there's, I know like, I'm, I, if, if the creator of this is watching and I don't mean any disrespect by this, I mean, I, the first thing I see when I saw it fly away from that was like old fashioned, like Gary's Ma just ragdolls flailing. Now, I mean, granted, um, I could very rear- I mean, with the weird physics of this world and their 
non-gravity attractive force. I could very much see that as just being the, a weird case of that happening, or maybe like methane from the digestive tract being released and then it shooting off into the air or something like a, like a balloon. But, oh, <laughs> that threw me off guard. I am sorry. Oh, oh yeah, there's, there, there she is. You're yeah. sure they found it? Yes, Commander. While they were functioning, all sensors gave heavy readings of the chemicals you specified. I don't think it could have been anything else. Mobia, you've let me down before. Look, I've got- Lieutenant! This is it. Again, with the whole thing of her being like a demilute human, like, I, I I should have known something was off. I mean, obviously, just with her, like, difference in a proportions versus everything, everyone else, she's so much lankier and, you know, just taller. But also the fact that she's, like, her mask doesn't completely cover her face. Like, she her eyes are exposed. And that's the, that armor she has. Is that, like, an actual armor or is that she's wearing that's just, you know, designed for her different modified physique? Or is that, like, some sort of weird exoskeleton she's developed? <laughs> I've got full confidence in these scouts. They should have everything under- Yeah, yeah, of course. <sighs> I believe you will be getting a demotion sometime in the future. Please oh yes. help yourself to the nectar. Yes, the rock plants. No! An arachnid! I don't often see the ant servant serving someone else. You're a bodyguard? Uh, actually, I'm an engineer. Engineer? My conspec was an engineer. And what an engineer she was. Take this paraphone, for instance. She built this one herself. And the one out by the door. One out in the hall, too. And the one out there, too. <laughs> even managed to teach me how to maintain them. I really don't have a head for these kinds of things. I'm just a man, you know? Uh, hmm. I prefer the paraphones to all this newfangled tech. Now you have to use an orchidio if you want to talk to anyone. <laughs> That's the flies for you. Just like those big, flashy men the stag beetles collect. Ah, uh, so we were, we're dealing with a bug racist. Great. <laughs> Showy and pointless. Where I'm from, there's not a lot of light, so paraphones are still- Ah, uh, but my conspec was a proper beetle. You should have seen her. Strong and headstrong, as a beetle should be. So those I are like- I need my pictures to move. All I need are the memories. I remember her. Yeah, they're the picture- like a version of picture frames. For a Bruin. She didn't have to, but she did. Have you been blessed with a conspec? Oh, no, there are plenty of other tarantulas, but I'm the only Gramostola rosea, male or female. I'm sorry to smell that, but you must have a close enough. I'm sure you're very attractive for a big hairy beast. Yeah, no, not gonna say anything. Uh... There must be someone. Some young arachnid man. Hmm. Well, I would like a close enough. But I think if I had one, I would prefer... Tarantulas lack ears. However, their hairs are very sensitive to vibration. <laughs> you again! I really wonder if Sephodra has like a complex or something, because from what we've seen, it seems like this captain here, or wait, was it Lieutenant? Oh god, I'm forgetting. I'm sorry, but like I has to, I have to wonder if she's developed a complex just because this little like a human has is just everywhere. Why now, huh? First I don't see you for years, then all the way down on ha, B1. Now up here on Apex, are you following me? Oh, but now I have to have the paraphone set up so loud. I can barely smell anything these days. Oh, when I touch you, you conniving little... 
Maybe that's for the best. So how are you with feeling vibrations? Well, it's not as though I have ears. I know grasshopper or cicada, and I'm glad I can't hear either. That sound, Fairphone. Oh, the filth! Don't think I don't know what those crickets are singing about. Sound... so, okay, so sound... huh. Okay. You don't say. Oh, bug bazooka. Oh, bombardier beetle compounds, eh? Very clever, but not clever enough. Let's see. Aha! I'll just be one moment. Excuse me, Sephodra, ma'am, with all due respect. Did you put a hole in the floor? Oh, no. Pudding. I am putting a hole in the floor. Ah, yes. The problem was that she, that it was present tense, not past tense. Oh, come on. People hardly even use floors. I use them. And I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah. Oh, it'll poor guy. Not Poor with guy. the same structural integrity, and it'll never sync up right with the rest of the room unless you gut the whole- Is something wrong? Go distract him. So, uh, tell me more about your conspec. Oh, yes. You know, it's not just the paraphone she built for us. There was also the pneumatic dumbwaiter. Yeah. And the perfume metronome. <laughs> and the ornithopter. I mean, I I know there's the whole thing of you know doing needing to get the job done, but I at this point that just seems personal. And of course, the great timekeeper. Oh god, cows! Why can't we communicate? Well, um... Given what I've known from this series, you know, you guys communicate by, via, you know, smell, and we communicate by sound. Well, I mean, mostly. I mean, there's a bit of smell depending on the circumstances, but still. The problem lies in our brains. This is Vernica's area. This part of the brain comprehends language. Without it, you could not read or understand human speech. And this is Broca's area. This part encodes language. Without it, you could not write or speak. Human language is a long, linear string of words. Yes. One dimensional. With language, you can quickly memorize a six-page script. Without language, you can only memorize a sequence that is three to four segments long. Our language is different. It is three-dimensional as much as a paragraph of smell ejected at a time. Some time is given for the air to clear, and for the listener to finish comprehending. Then, another paragraph. To us, a one-dimensional string of words would be impossible to follow. Likewise, you would quickly be overwhelmed by our many words spoken at once. And of course, how would you smell us? You would need smell receptors tied to our unique pheromones, yeah, that wouldn't out really a few work. Molecules from a quadrillion. And how would you respond without a cuticle to emit hydrocarbons? Even those of us who can hear you could not make out individual words. The sound pheromone is for mating calls, not true communication. And even if we could understand, how could we reply without your complicated mouths and throats? There is sign language, yes, but most of us cannot see fine details, let alone something as small as you. And we would have no common grammar. We would understand single words at best. No, the barriers to communication are simply too vast. I mean, with all that being said, it would suck to be a bug. 
granted, I mean, I'm saying that as a human, so I mean, if I was born one, obviously I'd be used to it. And yet, there is a way. Is there? I swear, Gregorisa, I Why do you keep teasing out these little bits? Why? Okay, I got my 61 points. Uh, if you had heard of... Four points if you would heard of Johnston's organs? Mm, no, never heard of them. I mean, granted, I'm not, I'm not really one, but, I mean, before this series, I've never really won one for um, insect and other bug, like, anatomy, so I'm kind of at um, a disadvantage there. Uh, again, no, I did not know mantises had an ear, had or an ear or ears, depending. Uh, rock plants evolved multiple, yada, 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 yes, I remember the rock plants, that's two points for me, finally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did know that, like, they didn't have ears, so yeah, I give myself two for that. Um, though they are not the only species to have evolved ears, grasshoppers, crickets, and uh, cicadas are some of the most well-known. Each of these insects has evolved its ears separately for the purposes of hearing mating calls, and each has evolved them in a different place. And crickets' ears are on the front legs. Okay, how does that work internally? Grasshoppers, uh, it's on the abdomen, located just behind the back legs. And cicadas, the ear is inside the abdomen. The abdomen is largely a hollow space, um, working as an echo chamber, both to assist in hearing and to amplify the male cicada's calls. Okay. To, to, yeah, again, I didn't know they had ears. Though, I mean, actually thinking about it, I mean, granted, a lot of them are, you know, are known for making noise. So you'd think that there'd be a pr that they would have to have some way of, you know, hearing the noise that they produce. <sighs> so I guess that's what that's on me, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, bomb, yada, 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 bomb, bar, DA, Beatles, two points, because I remember. MG Zeres results in loss of energy, I call it asphasia. Um, of course, with the damage to these areas, you do not totally lose the ability to use your language. Biologically, uh, biology is quite resilient, of course, yeah, and possess many redundancies, yes. Human brain is no exception. However, we microbes never had these areas to begin with. By the standards of your language, we are uh, considered uh, considered to suffer from complete asphasia. Hmm. Uh, three points if you knew about the Brock and uh, Work uh, and Werwick's uh, areas of the brains. No, I did not. But I have heard of um, aphasia before. Uh, great. It's, it was a long time ago. It was probably in some documentary or other, but I do remember that name. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know what? I'll give myself the point there. Um, just because, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard not to know of the human's abil uh, of human ability to just reckon uh, remember things. I mean, how many phone numbers do you remember? <laughs> Suffice to say, efforts to comprehend such a degree of information would quickly overwhelm the human brain. Yeah, probably. I, I did know the whole thing about smell receptors. Which, I mean, when you think of, like, the more you know, disgusting smells out there, it is kind of, it is equally more disgusting that to actually smell the thing, you actually have to have a very tiny piece of it latch onto your body. I mean, granted, it's in your nose. And if I remember correctly, and if I remember correctly, I think I remember hearing that the reason why sometimes you'll just sneeze out of the blue is sort of like a hard reset for your nose. So, so you just like blow at all of the like particles and pheromones and all that stuff in your nose out so you can kind of get like a fresh slate. Also, uh, a second thing I know about them is like, uh, you know how when you're sick, you'll often feel like one nostril will be completely clogged while the other is free and then it'll kind of like alternate from time to time? That's actually part of like when you're uh, healthy, that's how you smell. Um, uh, because uh, some uh, some smells are taken, like are like read better or, or found better by your nose if they're moving quickly versus if they're slow. So you have one nostril that constricts so that the airflow going through it is faster so that smells, you know, get picked up by that nostril. And with that, it then switches uh, from nostril from time to time so that, you know, it, you don't have to, you, you know, share the load as it were. I know that's not the most scientific language, but forgive me. I've had a long day and I'm tired. Uh, yeah, I, again, I remember pheromones, so that's two points. Tea rooms are rather extravagant. Uh, one like this is generally only found in cafes, 
or in the homes of those who are fairly well off and eager to impress. That is, that is something I was wondering, because that is, because like, when I first saw the room, I was thinking a lot of just wastage, because like, you have this huge room where the floor is basically just covered in the drink, and you think that like, two of those insects, even if they are giant insects, would not be able to drink all of that in one sitting. Yeah, if you knew about bee waterers. Uh, no, I did not. Now a fairly antiquated device. This was once used to transport small articles from one room and house to another, using only air pressure. Uh, for this reason, I elected to translate uh, the name as pneumatic dumbwaiter. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I do know what a dumbwaiter is, and I always wished I lived in a house with one, because I just always found it would be so cool to have like a mini elevator in your house. Another obsolete invention, this was once used to keep time by periodically emitting puffs of perfume, uh, though its purpose was for keeping uh, conversations well paced, not timing music. It is similar enough that I decided to translate it as a perfume metronome. Nowadays, modern air conditioning has lessened the need to be careful of conversational scent overlap. Okay, I know what a metronome is, yes. A novelty, this model dragonfly was capable of limited flight once activated. Interestingly, you have invented a similar such contraptions uh, yourselves. Ornithopter is a fairly straightforward translation. Yes, well, I mean, like, I remember, well, one, the ornithopters in Dune, which are you know, uh, in the new Dune movie. And two, I think I remember I had a remote control, like, robot insect that was basically like that at one point. I forget what it was called. It was a, obviously a long time ago. But yeah, I'll give myself a point for that. Through the fading of their sense, we can keep track of time from the second up to the time of year. This one is rather impractically large. I think, amusingly, you seem to have something similar called a grandfather clock. I know what a grandfather clock is. Am I old? If you remember pheromones, yes, yes, I remember that. A primitive form of the art of Arcadio. Uh, these largely static flower puppets are equivalent to photos for us. If you remember the Arcadio, yes, yes, of course I do. Oh, what? There it is. I I was not ready for it. But their way was impressive, charming if simplistic. But then they were children. Huh. Okay. Oh, um, also, before I forget, because I, I just realized I forgot to show it on the main part of the episode, yeah, I have 80 points now. I have to wonder if this commander is cape, given her, like, demolution. I have to wonder if she's capable of speaking with the insects, like, through pheromones. I mean, given the more, I guess the right word would be, organic look of her armor, I, that kind of does... You know, uh, that kind of does uh, bring over the idea that it's a part of her, s like, through the demolition or whatever. So there might be some insect-like aspects of her biology. So, like, she might be able, I don't know, be like a translator, being able to comprehend the bug language while being able to speak it, and the reason she doesn't speak it is just because Sephora is her enemy. Hmm. We'll have to see eventually, won't we? So, yeah. Ah, another wonderful episode. And I, once again, I cannot wait for the next. So, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play today. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.